In this lecture, we're going to learn about atomic orbitals. Now, the definition of an atomic orbital is that it's a region where there's a high probability of finding an electron. Now, uh, we're going to build this uh, concept of what an orbital is and what it looks like and uh, what does it mean when we say that there's a region where there's a high probability of finding an electron. Now, previously, we used to uh, um, drawing atoms like this. Uh, this is an atom uh, like you've, you've previously been used to. There's a nucleus in the center. This nucleus is attracting an electron and that electron is present in a shell. Now there's one problem with this, uh, with this idea and that is that it's actually very, very hard to figure out where this electron is. So there is no circular path in which this electron is moving. Uh, the electron cannot be imagined as if it's a particle because it's traveling so fast that it could be, uh, it's very hard to actually figure out where that exact position is. So a better idea of uh, what an electron would be doing is, that if there's a nucleus and an electron is being attracted, so a better visualization of an atom would be that that electron would be moving very fast in different areas and it would be traveling all over the place, it would be all over the place and there would be a region where there would be a very high probability of finding this electron. So this electron would be moving really, really fast around this nucleus uh, and it will be traveling so fast that it's actually really hard to figure out where this electron is. So, so there would be an area around the nucleus where there would be a very high probability of finding an electron. So I don't know exactly where that electron is. I've uh, drawn the path that electron is taking. So I've, I've somehow guessed that what the path is. But I don't exactly know where in that area that electron is at a particular instant. So this region would would be considered that it has a very high probability it would be a high probability area where there's a very high probability of finding an electron now to better understand what i've just mentioned is that i can come up with an analogy and what i wanted to tell you was that uh, this image of an electron just sitting over there around a nucleus this image is incorrect and what I've told you is that the electron is moving very fast around the nucleus. We don't know where exactly that electron is, but we can we can define an area around the nucleus where there's a very high probability where that electron might be. So, so we're not sure where the electron actually is, but we know that it is somewhere in this area. So I've come up with an analogy, and that analogy re revolves around a fan. So here's a fan, and this is a stationary fan. It's not spinning. So I can pretty much exactly tell where the blades of the fan are. So there's one blade over here, there's one blade over here, and there's one blade over here. So this is a stationary fan. And this is exactly the same case that you studied before, that electron, you thought of electrons as being stationary at one point. Now imagine that this fan starts rotating and spinning. What are you going to see? What you're going to observe is something like this. Now if somebody uh, who has never seen a fan that is stationary, so if you've never actually seen the fan in this position, and all your life you've seen a fan that's spinning, and uh, you're asked to tell where the blades of the wings are. So you can't really tell where in this region the blades exactly are. This is the same scenario over here. We can't really tell where the electrons are because the electrons are traveling very fast. So it's actually very hard to figure out where the blades of, blades of the wings blades of the fan really are in this area but uh, what i can do is i can define an area around on this fan where there's a very high probability of finding where there's going to be a very high probability of actually locating those blades are so i know exactly where the blades of the fan are but i'm not sure i can't really pinpoint where in that area they exactly are so i've defined an area uh, around this fan and this is the area where the, the blades of the fan are going to be over this area the, there's going to be zero probability if i stick my hand anywhere in this area i'm going to be hit by a fan the same goes for the electron so there's an area around the nucleus and the electron is traveling very fast if i stick my hand anywhere in this area an electron is going to hit me even though if there's only one electron, but that electron is whizzing around so fast, somewhere in this area, we don't really know, we're not even sure what the path of the electron is, but I have a, I have a vague idea of where, 
what that area is i can i can sense the negative charge the negative charge would tell me that this is the area where the electron is going to be uh, so the, i can i can look at the properties of the electron specifically the negative charge and figure out that it's somewhere in this area i can feel the negative charge but i don't know exactly where they are the same goes for the fan uh, you can you can check the wind pressures etc and figure out uh, that this is the area where you can visually for the fan you can use your visual aids and you can see and figure out that this is the area where the fan uh, the blades of the fan are going to be but you're not very sure where exactly in that area but to an observer it's going to appear that the blades of the fan are everywhere in this area so anyone who's observing this fan uh, if he's asked to put his hand inside this area, there's no safe place. Anywhere he puts his hand, because the blades are moving so fast, the blade is going to hit you. The same goes for the electron. Anywhere in this area, you stick your hand and an electron would hit you. Even though if there's only one electron, if this is the area that electron is occupying, the electron is traveling fast. And to an outside observer, it would appear that the electron is everywhere in this area. The negative charge would be felt everywhere in this area, exactly like this fan. The blades would be felt everywhere in this area. The blades would not be localized. The blades would be present everywhere in this well-defined region. Outside this, outside this region, the probability of a blade of the fan hitting your hand would come almost come to zero. And the same goes for the electron. Outside this area, you, if you stick your hands, an electron, a negative charge actually hitting your hand, the probability would decrease to zero. But anywhere in this area, even though if there's only one electron, no matter where you are, an electron would strike you as soon as you enter this area. So this is the region where there's going to be a very, very high probability of finding an electron. And this area would be, uh, in loose terms, would be defined as an orbital. Now I'm going to discuss the types of orbitals that are present in atoms. So an orbital is the region where, you, where there's a very high probability of finding an electron. So the first orbital that I'm going to discuss is called an S orbital. Now an S orbital is a spherical region. So the shape of the orbital is going to be spherical. So it's going to be a spherical area around the nucleus. So this central part uh, that's where the nucleus is. So let's uh, put a positive sign on that. So that's where the nucleus is. And the electron would be present, if it's present in an S orbital, would be somewhere in this area, this uh, spherical region that I'm marking. So, so an electron would be in this spherical region. So it would be moving somewhere in this region, but we wouldn't be sure how the electron is actually moving, but it would be present somewhere in this, in this spherical region around the nucleus and it would be moving and traveling very fast. So anywhere in that region, uh, you're going to find that electron. So the probability of finding an electron to an outside observer it would appear that the electron is everywhere in that spherical area. Just like the example of that spinning fan. Uh, if a fan is spinning and moving very fast, for an outside observer, it appears that the blades of the fan are everywhere in a circular region. So the same applies to this electron in S orbital. In an S orbital, it's a spherical region around the nucleus. And the electron is somewhere moving around in this region really, really fast. And anyone who approaches this spherical region is going to experience uh, the negative charge of an electron. So, so if you try to stick your hand from this side, you're going to you, an electron would hit you. If you stick your hand from this side, an electron would hit you anywhere in that region. If you try to enter that region, an electron is going to hit you. So this is an S orbital. And this orbital has, any orbital actually has a maximum, you can, you can uh, fit a maximum of two electrons in that particular orbital. So there can be two electrons present in this region and uh, there could be one electron or it could be empty as well. So a maximum of two electrons can be present in an S orbital and the electron would be somewhere in this spherical region if it's in an S orbital. Now, the next type of orbital that I'm going to discuss is called a P orbital. All these three uh, orbitals drawn, they are uh, regions around the nucleus, and these are called P orbitals. So, let's write that down. These are your P orbitals, and there would be three types of P orbitals. As you can see, P orbitals are different from S orbitals. Their shape is different. It's, uh, it's called a dumbbell shaped. So, they have a dumbbell shape region 
which means that there would be two lobes present and an electron could be present in, in pre present in these two lobes so this central part is your nucleus so let's label that nucleus you have a positively charged nucleus in the center this one is also a p orbital having a positively charged nucleus in the center so if an electron is present in a p orbital the electron would be moving somewhere in this region so it would be moving randomly very very fast in that particular region so so to an outside observer it would be to an outside ob observer it would appear that the electron is somewhere in this dumbbell shaped region in the two lobes around the nucleus and to an outside ob observer it would appear that the electron is everywhere in this um, in this in these two lobes so this is your p orbital it's a it, it has two lobes it's dumbbell shaped and an electron could be anywhere in this region and to an outside observer if he tries to stick his hand into this region he's going to experience an electron if he sticks his hand in this region he's going to experience an electron so the electron is traveling very fast and uh, just like the example of the fan again a spinning fan uh, to an outside ob observer it appears that the blades of the fan are everywhere so to an outside observer it would appear that the electron is everywhere in this region and uh, one important point that a p orbital is directional it has a certain direction so there are three types of p orbitals if it's lying on the x axis then that orbital is called a px orbital because it's lying on the x axis vice versa if it's lying on the y axis it's called a py orbital and the third case is that if it's if it's lying on the z axis then it would be called a pz orbital so there are three different types of p orbitals one is a px the other one is a py and the third is the pz orbital depending on the direction in which the orbitals are lying and also remember this point that in three dimensional space there are no x y or z axis labeled this labeling is arbitrary you can pick any axis and call it an x axis the y axis would be the one that would be 90 degrees to the first one so all these three axes are 90 degrees to each other uh, in reality, there are no X, Y, and Z axes labeled, so it's an arbitrary notation. You can pick any axis and call it an X axis. Any axis could be called a Y axis, and any axis could be called a Z axis, as long as they are all 90 degrees to each other. So this is how uh, an electron in a p orbital would look like if it's present in a p orbital. The third type of orbital is called a d orbital, and there are many different types of d orbitals. So there are five different types of d orbitals a d orbital a uh, typical d orbital is flower shaped uh, it's going to have four lobes so the, here in the center is your nucleus and an electron will be moving around very very fast in these regions and it could be present in and they are, uh, a d orbital has four lobes so you can see that there are four lobes so an electron could would be traveling very very fast in these regions so any outside observer would would uh, for an outside observer it would appear that the electron is everywhere in this region so if an electron is in a d orbital so to an outside observer if he's approaching this atom it would appear that there's negative charge everywhere in this region so so this is the shape of a typical d orbital the only difference between all these d orbitals is that the plane in which they are lying is different uh you have different types of d orbital this one is a dyz orbital a dyz orbital lies on the yz plane so it's in the yz plane so it's, it's the orbitals would be between the y and z axis a dxz orbital so this one is the dxz orbital would be lying in the xz plane so the plane is different the nucleus is still in the center but the orbitals lying are lying in a different plane similarly you have a dxy orbital uh, and that is lying on in the xy plane and then you have a dx square minus y square orbital and the four lobes in a dx square minus y square orbital they're lying on the x and y axis so you can see the plane is different and the orbital orientation is different around the nucleus so none of the orbitals are actually overlapping with each other they're all lying in different planes uh, the dz square is actually a different has a different shape so you can see that if an electron is in a dz square orbital uh, it's, it's similar to a p orbital the electron would be in this region around the nucleus so it would be in any of these two lobes and there would be a circular donut shaped ring around the around the nucleus 
where the electron could be found. So the probability of uh, the maximum probability of finding an electron would be in this region. So the shape of a dz square orbital is slightly different. So there are five different types of d orbitals. Mostly their orientation is different. Uh, one orbital, one d orbital, has a completely different shape to the other four d orbitals. Lastly, we are also going to briefly discuss what f orbitals are. There's another type of orbitals called f orbitals. So these are the shapes of the f orbitals. As you can see, a typical f orbital has uh, eight lobes where there's a very high probability of finding an electron. So if an electron is in an f orbital, uh, these regions over here, they would all uh, show a very high negative charge, which, which to an outside observer would would experience that the electron is everywhere in these lobes. So if an electron is in, a, is in an f orbital, uh, the region of highest probability is shown over here. There are eight lobes. So uh, these four, they have different orientation around the nucleus. The nucleus, remember, is in the center of the of the eight lobes. And there are three f orbitals which have a slightly different shape. Again, the, it's similar to a p orbital, but slightly different. So uh, remember, f orbitals are not in your course. What you just need to know for uh, for A levels is that there are seven different types of f orbitals. Whenever you talk about f orbitals, there are seven different types of f orbitals, and uh, d orbitals are in A two. So these are your d orbitals. So whenever d orbitals are mentioned uh, for AS, you don't need to actually know the shape of the d orbitals, but you must know that there are five different types of d orbitals. Similarly, if you move to p orbitals, you must uh, know the shape of the p orbitals. For AS and A2, you you would be asked to draw the shape of the p orbitals. Uh, there are three different types of p orbitals, and there's only one type of s orbital.